wondered how to make a clip move around on screen? Like this. Or how about rotate 360 degrees? Whoa! Or how about make the colour and effects gradually come in and come out? Guys, this is too much. Back to normal please, thank you. The animation of Eclipse properties is done through a process called keyframing. Here we can alter Eclipse motion, effects, audio levels or colour over time. So rather than create a change to an entire clip, with keyframing we're creating a transition, something that is changing as the clip plays, meaning we as the producer have a huge amount of creative control over how our footage looks. So how do we get started in LumaFusion? Well, let's start with the basics and then move on to an example we can do together. When we want to make a change to a piece of video, we do so using the editors. By double tapping on a clip on the timeline, we can access the frame and fit editor to change the size and position of a clip, the speed and reverse editor for altering the pacing and direction, the stabilization editor to reduce any shakiness, the audio editor to raise or reduce volume or alter the audio in a multitude of ways, and the colour and effects editor to colour correct clips and add blurs, distortions, chroma key and a wide variety of customisable styled effects. So in this example here, I want to punch in on this clip and make it black and white. To do so, I double tap to open the frame and fit editor and zoom into where I want it. And then I head over to the colour and effects editor using this icon at the bottom of the screen and tap the original colour preset and bring that saturation down to zero using the slider. Now you'll have noticed the changes I've just made in the frame and fit and colour and effects editor affect the entirety of the clip I selected on the timeline. But what happens if I want to make these changes but I want to make them gradually happen over time? So instead of this clip looking like this for its duration, I want the clip to zoom in and fade into black and white as the video is playing through. To do that we need to create two separate keyframe animations, one for the size change and one for the colour change. So let's do this together. I'm going to now take you step by step through how you achieve this effect and get started with keyframing. So here is my original unedited clip on the timeline. I want to first make a change to the size of the clip to create that zoom in effect, so I double tap to open the frame and fit editor. To start keyframing, we direct our eyes to these little circles at the bottom left of our screen. This icon is used to activate keyframing. Before I tap that though, notice that we can scrub through our clip with the playhead here below the preview screen. Now really important to understand this guys, your video is made up of what we call frames. These frames are simply individual images that are played back really, really fast to give you the illusion of movement. That's all a video is at the end of the day, loads and loads of pictures played back in order. Remember those flip books with stick men? Well, that's what our videos are, just super sophisticated versions of this. So we can see each frame of our video here in the preview screen by stepping forward and back with these arrow icons. Notice the frame count is going up and down as we tap through. When we tap the add keyframe icon, we're telling the editor where we want our transition to start. So here I'm going to start the zoom in transition exactly one second into the video. When my playhead is on the frame I like, I tap the add keyframing icon. This will turn on keyframing and add an initial keyframe at the playhead position. Notice that I have a blue circle here now. This is your keyframe marker. It is marking that special frame in your video where your transition is going to begin. So in our case, the start of our zoom. Now I'm going to scrub through my clip and find a position where I would like my zoom in to end. We're just finding a good place for the end of our transition now. I think this is a nice place, so I'm going to tap the add keyframe button to add a new keyframe here and then use the sliders or my fingers to punch into my clip. So we've added two keyframes, number one and number two. We can jump between them by tapping these blue keyframe markers. Tap to play now and we'll see a smooth transition from our first keyframe position to our second. If you're finding it difficult to wrap your head around this concept, 
Think of these blue circles as orders you're giving to the editor. So at this point here, we want the frame and fit to look like this. At this second point, we want the frame and fit of our clip to look like this. All the editor is doing now is obeying these orders and is moving your clip to get from point A to point B. If you want to make a change to a keyframe that you're not happy with, you can place your playhead on top of a keyframe, like it is right now where this blue circle is bigger and has a white border, and then modify in the preview screen to make any changes. Note that if you make a change to the clip where the playhead is not on a keyframe, like here for example, you will automatically add a keyframe with any changes to the clip. To delete, tap on the delete keyframe button. So here we have our keyframed animation. Notice here a small blue dot is shown on the control group next to the name and next to the frame and fit tab to indicate animation keyframes have been set. We can add separate keyframes to any expanded control group or effect and these will work simultaneously if you were to add a multitude at once. So let's do that, shall we? In this same clip here, we also wanted it to fade to black and white as the clip zoomed in. To do this, of course, we need to tap on the color and effects tab. We need to add our effect. So in this case, we're going to tap on the original color preset and then focus, of course, on that magic add keyframing icon at the bottom left of our screen. We scrub to find where we want to add our first keyframe or use the step forward and back arrow icons for precision. Then we add our first keyframe, where our fade to black and white is going to start. Remember, this is a completely separate keyframe animation to our zoom in within the frame and fit editor. So we're just looking for where we want the color change to begin. It might be where our zoom started, or it could be somewhere completely different. So I think I'm going to start the effect transition here and add my first keyframe. Remember, this is like giving an order to the editor. So I'm saying at this stage of the video, I want my video to look like this with these settings, which I haven't of course altered. So in this case, full color. Now I add my next keyframe where I want my video to reach the full black and white setting. So I add a keyframe and I bring the saturation slider right down. So at this point in my video, you can see it'll look like this. So now from the first to the second keyframe, my video will fade from color to black and white, from the properties associated with this keyframe to the properties associated with this keyframe. So now we can see our video zooms in and it fades to black and white. We have added two different types of keyframe animation within two of our editors. Have a go with this at home, rewind this video, go back, pause it wherever you need to, and practice, practice, and then practice again until you're fully comfortable doing these basic keyframe transitions. Once you're a bit more practiced, my advice would be to just go wild and see what wacky movements and effect changes that you can make within your edits. Try using multiple keyframe animations at once, adding keyframes to different control groups at the same time. And if you're feeling extra fancy, you can even set keyframe animations onto your title presets or have a go at keyframing your audio levels up and down as needed. If you have any questions or concerns at all, please let us know in the comments below and we will get right to them. Or of course, you can bring them to our live practical workshops at the Lima Touch Academy. We've got new dates just added, so make sure you get onto those. I'll see you next week for more creativity. Get practicing, guys. See you soon. Yeah.